Welcome back to the shop. Little project we got for today. This is one of the newer style steel heads on pole pruners. I know these are pretty popular, the pole pruners, by the views that I get and on the pole saw repair that I did. I haven't yet had a chance to strip one of these newer styles down. So I had a customer who had a burn up pole saw. He wants to try to put this one on the other one. It's broke pretty bad. I don't believe it can be used, but we're gonna go in it and just see. So we're gonna see if we can figure out how to break it down and how it differs from the others. And this is your older style. You see they're very similar. This one is usually, even though it's removed, is usually fitted with a quarter pico sprocket. It can be converted. These generally come out of the factory with a 3.8 low pro. Kind of show it to you from each angle the same. And as we go, we'll use this one to compare and see any differences that we may see through them. Now the first thing you'll notice that was a design change. Originally, the bars were on the right hand side of the pole saw. Now with the new design, they've determined that the line of sight is better, so they've moved it to the left hand side. Also, on the older style pole saws, you had a round shaft. The new one is different. You cannot interchange them. So we know that basically the tank and the functions are the same, but I can also see where part of this is gone, where the hose comes from the oiler around. A little different style it looks like there. So first thing I'm gonna do is try to get this casing off of it and let's see what we got in there. I'm gonna start by just taking these screws out. Now, like I told you, this is the first one that I've done. I can see that even though it's broke here, this is part of this. So we're gonna disassemble this plate by removing this screw and this plate to lift off, and then we're gonna take this plate off. Say so we're just exploring is all we're doing to compare. You can see here on these two heads, function-wise, they're pretty much the same. You've got your side adjust tensioner on both of them with your tension rod. Here you notice this is mainly one piece. With this, you have some protection plates over the top. Here you have your bumper strips, where here you have a metal protection plate. So to, just to strip this apart, remember we're just exploring to see if it's worth fixing. So we're gonna strip it down. I'm gonna take this screw out and remove this plate, this screw out and whatever's under it, and remove this plate so we can see what's under there. Let's remove that screw. Design the screw into the plastic and then this plate will lift off. Now here you'll see we have three screws to remove this plate. Normal servicing, I'm sure this is not necessary, but we're wanting to see what it's made of. And these three screws are the same as that first screw I showed you. They're just made to screw into the plastic. And I guess you could say self-cutting threads. All right, let me take this over and clean it up where you can see what we're looking at. So from what we're seeing here, what this tells us, the only reason to take off the inspection plate, there's no reason to take this back one off. The only reason you would need to take this front one off if you needed to service the tensioner or change the bar stud. Other than that, there's not really much reason to take that front cover off. Let's pull these bolts that we loosened out of here. You see those bolts? So we can see now that this piece just falls straight out. This is actually the part right here that your sprocket would bolt to. In other words, this is this. And it just pokes through right here. Now you see here on the bottom, you have part of your pinion gear in here what drives your oiler. Here's your oiler sticking up out of it. Here's where you access your oiler to be able to pull your oiler. Now to remove this oiler, there's many different ways that you could do it. The way I like to generally do it, I'll start it with an M5, I believe by 0.80 screw with a set of flat washers on it and a nut that I can turn with a wrench. And that, We'll screw down into that oiler hole. If you look in there, it's hard to see, but there's threads. 
If you watch it, it's kind of poor lighting, but you can see it being drawn out. You can, I guess, take a claw hammer, and I have on some tough ones before. I learned this and pry it out, but you're taking a chance on breaking your housing or your casing. And all I'm doing is just tightening that bolt and it's pressing against those washers, which is making it pull that pump. It should be pretty close here. As you can see, this is just like basically the other pumps with the exception of a little different pumping system, but it's, it's styled the same. You just don't have your groove on one side, it's two holes. This is what that comes into. There's some holes inside that line up with that. And as this pinion is turning, when this is sticking up like it was through here, it's engaging that and that's what's pumping the oil. It's taking that oil, if you look here, this is pulling the oil out of this oiler tank and feeding it into the oil pump. And then the oil pump is pushing it through the pressure into here, up here and push into your bar. So in principle, it's pretty much the same design. You have a little connector here that connects everything. I'll take that out so you can see it. Now on a good unit, I would not be using a screwdriver to pry these lands out. You could damage them. You have to be a little more gentler. And that's your oil filter. So we've already got all the other screws out of it. We just really need to take these two out. Now, if you look on the end, and the others are a little different, but it's the same principle. It'll be located somewhere on it once you get your tank and all off. There's a little tab there. That tab is specifically made so that you can take a flathead screwdriver and put in it. And don't, don't get in and just go to twisting and jerking. Just lightly put a little bit of pressure. You don't want to booger up that edge around here where it clamps. A lot of times I can put a screwdriver in there and help. And there's probably a simpler way of doing it. If so, maybe somebody will chime in out there. All right. So here's what you have. Your shaft off of your pole saw is going to come in here and that's going to turn this. This pinion here is where everything meets up. This pinion is what meets onto your oil gear. Whenever your oil gear is in it, let me see if I can give you a little demonstration of that. It's, it might be hard to see. Let me get you over here in some better light. I'm gonna zoom you in right here, so just it's gonna shake a minute. If you'll watch where I'm gonna put this, it'll, it'll go similar to this. Let me see if you can see. You see where these two come together, the plastic gear and this. And as that drive shaft spinning, it's turning that gear. And that's what drives your oil pump. That's pretty much it. So as you can see, even though the design has changed and the bar position has changed, the relative idea of how it works is the same. I'm not gonna make you watch me put that back together. It's pretty much the same as the other design. I will post a link right here in this corner that you can click on there to go to the complete video on the reassembly of the old head and it's the same theory. As always, I appreciate y'all following along and I'll see you in the next video.